love you, but I can't stay with you anymore. I, 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 you're, you're great. You, you have wonderful qualities. I, I would love to see more of you, but it's, it's me. It's, it's not you. I, actually, I, I met someone else. We're, we're thinking of starting a colony together. Maybe some gardening, terraforming, not sure yet. No, this is my dream. Mars colonization would be wonderful. But right now it's science fiction. You know, it's something in our imaginations. This isn't, you know, just my dream. There's lots of folks in this audience out there too. But, you know, science fiction is science's imagination. The things that science fiction talks about in the future are the things that scientists and engineers work to create today. Uh, now, obviously, we've all been inspired by one brand of science fiction or another. Uh, Star Trek has long been my inspiration. Uh, but it really got me thinking, how can I make my science fiction dreams come true using the inspiration from these science fiction you know, sources? And obviously, you want to go to the people with the toys. Uh, Scotty, wonderful engineer. He can make anything happen. How does he do it? How does he build things? How, how does he fix things when they break? What? Yeah, well, duct tape, yes, sure. <laughs> duct tape of the 23rd century and 24th century. But what, what is he actually doing? I mean, really, think about this for a minute. Think about this in your own job. Scotty doesn't write device drivers. When he's fixing hardware, he's not out there coding at the low level. He's not working on you know, tracking down which component interfaces with, with co which component correctly. He's not thinking about those lowest level of details. Uh, Let's try a slightly uh, more realistic, unrealistic science fiction character. <laughs> Iron Man, you know, came out in movie form. I was never a fan of the comics. I never really read them, so this was my first introduction. So I apologize to any true fans out there. But this is like my dream engineer. If I could be this guy and have his toys, I would be. What in the world is he doing? What are his tools? Look at this. This robotic arm right here? That's more complicated than the one we've got up on the Mer rovers, right? How did he design that by himself and make it reliable? How did he design this boot? I mean, obviously, it bashed him into the ceiling a couple of times, and he had some trouble testing. But what, what was his design process? What are his tools? What is he thinking about? What is he focusing on when he's building all this? It's in the background there, his software. His software is helping him manage all of this complexity. He's not doing this himself. We can't do it ourselves, one person. We have teams. We have hundreds of people. And we go through a ton of, of organization to get it to stay, to manage the complexity. But engineers think of computers as calculators. How, how many of you really think of your, your software as anything more than a number crunching tool most of the time? I, I want you to start thinking in terms of pushing decisions into your software. It's just a subtle mind shift. It makes you think just a little bit differently about the software you're writing. Uh, and this, this type of decision-making process that you can put into software is what's going to help us design something that's this complex, but with many fewer people, for much less cost, and make it much more reliable because the software is managing our complexity for us. We just don't have the brain power to do it ourselves. Just a little history, you know, going, going way back, we're talking hundreds of years back, you know, artisans were really the source of the things we produced, right? Everything was custom, everything was hand-built. We got really advanced when we started standardizing, and we got into the industrial age, right? Mass production. Later, more recently, we got into the information age. We're really managing, you know, all of the, the complexity. We're, we're seeing an increase in our ability to manage complexity here. What I want to see is an industrial revolution of the mind, where our software can handle almost all of the complexity, and we just focus on the relevant stuff. So that's my challenge to everyone here. When you're thinking about the tools that you're using, when you're trying to achieve your dreams, when I'm trying to achieve my dreams, I am working on tools that make the complexity part of uh, the, the software process, the part that I don't have to pay attention to, so that I can build my Mars mission. What's your dream? What do you care about? What do you want to do? How can you push those decisions into tools that you can use over and over again to make your dreams come true? Because when you really think about it, you know, the only true future that you can have faith in is the future that you're willing to make. So that's really all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs>